Ochart. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today I want to talk with you about five, five aquarium filtration disasters that uh, unfortunately are far too common. You can imagine how I hear about them through my Facebook group and also through Instagram and of course the comments that I get under my, my videos. I often hear about these uh, these aquarium filtration disasters. So I'm going to share five of them with you as well as like I usually do a bonus or two at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that and uh, let's go ahead and get underway. If you're new to the channel, be sure to uh, to hit that sub button, that bell, notification bell, and uh, and subscribe, and that will tell YouTube that you are enjoying the channel, getting something out of the content, and uh, encourage YouTube to show the channel to other fish keepers like you and me. All right, so let's get right underway. So the first common uh, filtration disaster that I see, and that is shared with me through social media platforms, is the overcleaning, and. Uh, the, the question is usually in the form of, I, I did maintenance on my filter and uh, my fish died within a week after. What did I do wrong? Well, what more than likely happened is that you did too good a job of cleaning. Now in my aquarium, I have a couple things going on that would prevent that from happening. And I'll share those with you. First of all, I maintain a very deep substrate in my tanks because I want to provide beneficial bacteria uh, a place to live in the tank that is relatively stable and is not messed with. This way, when I'm messing with filters, decor, plants, I leave the, the substrate alone and uh, that gives me a nice, a nice foundation, a nice base that is stable for the beneficial bacteria. For those of you new to fish keeping, you have to have bacteria that can take the waste of your fish, the ammonia, and convert it into nitrite and then nitrate. Nitrate is relatively harmless. Ammonia and nitrite are bad and deadly, okay? So ammonia being the, the deadliest one. So uh, I use two things, two things uh, to safeguard against that. One. Uh, I have a backup of bacteria in my substrate, and also I have redundancy. In other words, I use two filters in each aquarium. And that way, one is running and one is harboring beneficial bacteria while I clean the other one. Then a couple weeks later, I'll service the second one. So getting your filters, getting your aquarium too clean, restarting what is called the aquarium cycle, creating an ammonia boost, that is a disaster. You'll have a die off and uh, you'll be very frustrated. Unfortunately, this is what happens to most new fish keepers. It's, it's what I feel um, is probably the biggest shortcoming in large box stores or even local fish stores who don't educate the new fish, the new fish keeper on this point enough. They have a die off and you find the aquarium on Craigslist or by the curbside because the person gives up. So number one, too clean. You, you, you did too good a job at cleaning the aquarium. Uh, number two kind of ties into number one and that is no redundancy and no backup. I have uh, at, you know, two filters in each of the tanks behind me. The smaller tanks, you know, you start to get into the 29 gallon, things like that. I'll just have one filter usually. However, I'll always have a filter in the wings, an extra filter that I can, that I can bring into, in, into play immediately should I have a filter that stops running. I don't care who makes the filter, I don't care if it's Fluval or Eheim or Sunsun, right, or Aquion, or it, it doesn't matter. They're mechanical. You know, they're, they break down, okay? These things break down, they fail, and you need to have something that you can grab off of a shelf, take the old media that was in the established filter, put it in that other filter, drop that filter into your tank, or have a sponge filter sitting in another tank, uh, perhaps like a quarantine tank, a couple sponge filters, 
you can pull one out, drop it in that tank until you get your larger filter repaired or replaced. So um, redundancy and backup. You need to have redundancy and backup in the event of a filter failure. <clears throat> this ties into point number three, always having a spare. And I know this for some of you on a tight budget, I, I know that's hard. You can do it in the form, like I said, a sponge filter. Have a sponge filter as your backup. Ideally, if you have, let's say, a Fluval or a Sun Sun, you'd have another one sitting in a box somewhere and uh, that you can just immediately pull out remove the media from the broken down or the one that's leaking or has failed and put that one into play immediately. So um, when people go to buy a filter, I tell them, hey, if you get them on sale, buy two. <laughs> Use one, stick one in the closet or on the shelf because at some point you might develop a leak, a motor might burn out, a pump might burn out and you'll need to put it into play. So number three is a spare. Number four, a leak. Filters from time to time will leak. Not so much the hang on backs, maybe where the motor attaches, uh, you know, where the, where the pump attaches, some of those hang on backs have that type of system. A lot of them have the, everything built inside now, so the, the likelihood of a leak becomes more and more less, you know, it becomes less and less. You know, when you're dealing with things like canister filters, a canister filter has an intake way down in the tank. And as a result, if you have a leak, that potentially can siphon a tremendous amount of water out and onto the floor. And you've gone out to do something, you know, you've gone and spent the day at a ball game or with family or friends or left town for the day and came back, you have a lot of water everywhere. So um, number four is the dreaded leak. What you can do about that, in the case of a canister filter, Consider using something like a Rubbermaid uh, or just some type of a plastic storage unit that is that can hold water and put that canister unit inside of that, put it inside of that unit and, and then uh, invest a few dollars in an inexpensive water sensor and put that in, in the plastic container. And what you'll find is that it'll alert you with an alarm. In some cases, you can even buy them where they will send a text, they'll send a message to your phone that, hey, there's some humidity, there's some moisture, and uh, you, can, you can handle, you can go in and take care of that leak. What do you do with a leaky canister? If you can't figure it out right away, it's usually something like an O-ring that has cracked or failed or become flat in some spot, so water is leaking out. Worst case scenario, you have a crack or you have a, uh, perhaps a hose that isn't attached uh, as as uh, as tightly as it should be, you know you can fix some of these things, but sometimes you got to swap it out. That takes us back to number two and number three, having a spare, having redundancy. Let's say you need to have that that filter replaced. You don't have a spare. If you have two filters on the tank, one can hold the volume of the tank while you get the other one replaced or or fixed. Again the value of having two filters on a tank, especially in the larger setups. Number five, you're trying to, you're trying to stuff too much into your filter. This is pretty common. You know, the person will put, they'll put pinky floss, they'll put uh, uh, media, uh, right? They'll put bio home, they'll put uh, bio balls, they'll put uh, matrix, and they'll put, uh, the, you know, they'll put some, some crib batting, you know, some, some, and they'll put, they'll just stuff too much in there and they'll restrict the water flow. There's a sweet balance between what you have in the filter and running water through, okay? You want water to be passing, uh, to get, you know, to be passing over that media, all right? Whether it's the beneficial bacteria living in your biological media, like your like your bio balls or your matrix or your bio home or whatever it might be, your sponges, those all are the home of beneficial bacteria in the filter. So you want water passing through that and not have it so stuffed that uh, the water can't get through. And as a result, your gallons per hour goes way down. So your filter is rated at 300, but you have it so stuffed that it probably is doing 100, 120 gallons per hour. 
so less water is getting filtered and you can't figure out why you have a cloudy tank. I have a lot of media in my, in, in, you know, I have some great media in my filter. Why is my tank still cloudy? Well, the water's gotta pass through to remove the, part, the, the particles. And if you're restricting it by having it too stuffed, and then after a while, of course, it gets plugged up with detritus, if it's doing its job, now you're down to 75 gallons per hour, <laughs> okay? So you're not turning over that tank volume at all. The sweet spot usually for tank turnover, you wanna go five, in some cases 10, depending how heavily stocked that tank is, five to 10 times uh, per hour. So. 100 gallon aquarium, 1,000 gallons per hour, right? Well, if you've, stuffed, if you've stuffed those filters too much and you're getting 300 gallons per hour, you're gonna have a cloudy tank and you're gonna be adding, uh, you know, clarity and all kinds of other things, trying to figure it out. You're just not running the water through the, through the media enough, okay? Not letting the sponges do their, do their, mechanical, their mechanical magic. So overstuffing, Reducing your, your gallons per hour can be a problem. And uh, can, this can also re, uh, result in a noisy, in the case of a canister filter, overstuffing it, I found, uh, resulted in a noisy filter because you're, the baskets, the baskets in your canister filter have to fit tightly right into each other. So it's nice and snug. But if the, if the, can, if the baskets are too full, the, the baskets don't, don't snap into place, they sit a little bit off and then they rattle, they rattle. So don't, don't, be, so, uh, don't be too overzealous with how much media you wanna put into those baskets, okay? So um, a bonus tip that is, I've talked about often, certainly if you, if you go to my live streams on, uh, on Saturday at 11 o'clock central, I'll put a plug in, 11 o'clock central, the uh, cichlids and coffee live streams. I've talked about this, uh, you need to know how the water flows in, in your filters. And that way you can, you can line up things correctly. For example, sponges. You need to have a coarse sponge. You need to have a coarse sponge picking up the big pieces. Then a medium sponge that picks up the smaller pieces that got through the coarse sponge. And then a fine sponge to pick up the smallest pieces of waste and detritus. Now, if you don't know that the water flows this way and you put your fine sponge first, it's gonna become immediately blocked. You're gonna have a blocked sponge, restricted water flow, the water flow is gonna work its way around the sponge and you're gonna end up with a cloudy tank. So you have to know how your water flows so you can set up your media correctly. I go coarse, medium, fine on my sponges. So the water flows through coarse, medium, and fine. And then I'll, I'll put some, some, beneficial back, you know, some beneficial bacteria media, like your bio balls, things like that. And then finally, some chemical. If, I, if I'm using chemical, like a chemipure or a pur purigen, a secam purigen, or even uh, activated charcoal, that'll be the last thing that the water hits on the way back to the tank. That's just how I set it up. How you set it up, if it's working for you, great. But just realize that if, you're, if your water is hitting a fine sponge first, you're gonna end up with a clogged filter. It's inevitable and you're hardly gonna be using the, the coarse and medium sponges. They're gonna be uh, you know, not really doing what they can be doing because everything is getting filtered out before it even gets to those, to those two, okay? Any other points or, or filtration disasters you wanna share, Share them in the comments below. We all learn from each other around here, okay? So that's it for me. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream at 11 a.m. Central. That's 9 a.m. Pacific, so no excuses out there. Kevin Green, do you hear me? And, uh, and that's noon Eastern, all right? Hope to see you then. Thanks for tuning in. You are appreciated. Bye-bye.